If you're a professional looking to have more impact using data, if you're looking to up-level your data analysis game, this is the video series for you. This is part two of exploratory data analysis with Excel. And if you got here prematurely, if you need to find the first video in the series, just click up here in the card, there's a link to the first video in the series. Okay, the subject of this video is basic categoricals. What we're going to do is take a look at the Titanic data set and focus on the categorical features in the context of our overriding business question, which is what are the patterns in the data that are highly associated with survival? So let's flip over to Excel and start working through the data. Okay, you can see here that I'm in Excel and what I've done prior to this video was just add a couple of new columns of data, a couple of new features to the data. Oh, and by the way, uh, I come from a machine learning background, so I will tend to use terminology like columns, variables, and features, and they all mean the same thing, just a column of data. So what you can see here is I added a new column called new survived. And that's because what we established in video number one is that the survived column, while it's encoded as numeric, right, zeros and ones, it isn't actually a numeric, it's a categorical. Essentially, one indicates that the passenger survived, and zero indicated that the passenger unfortunately perished. So what I did was just create a new handy dandy feature, a new column of data called new survived and populated it using a simple Excel function call. I just checked to see if the B column, the survived column is equal to one. And, I, and if it is, I substituted in the string survived. Otherwise I put in the string perished. And this is gonna be interesting for later on in the video for us, is to actually work with these categories as text rather than use the numbers. You could certainly use the numbers if you wanted to, but it's a little bit cleaner and nicer if you actually have labels like this. Similarly, what I did before the video was I added a new feature called new p-class or a new column of data called new p-class. And I just used the good old ifs function up here to essentially say, hey, if your P class is equal to one, make it the string first. If it's two, then make it the string second. And if it's three, then make it the string third. And that's gonna just make our analyses a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. Out of the box, Excel comes with a really, really great and powerful tool for exploring categorical data. And that is the mighty pivot table. So pivot tables are a great way to do a very early exploratory analysis on categorical features, especially when you have a business question in mind. So let's go ahead and add a pivot table and, and illustrate what I'm talking about here. So let's go ahead and insert a new pivot table, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this existing worksheet. And where we're, going to, where we're going to put it, let's put it in P2, let's say. So we'll just go ahead and location P2, okay. And we'll just add pivot table. And I'll just scroll over so that we can see it a lot easier. Okay, pivot table, awesome. So if we just explore left to right, you know, columns from the left to the right, because why not? We're in a very early phase of our analysis here. The first categorical feature that we're interested in is the p-class column. You could take a look at survived if you wanted to just to get the relative proportions, but that's not as in, nearly as interesting as actually saying, look, what are the other categor categorical features, how do they relate to the overarching business question that we're looking at, which is, for example, how does p-class relate to survival rates? Because that's the thing we're interested in analyzing. So that's pretty easy to take a look at. What I'll do is I'll grab the new p-class feature, drag it to the rows, and you can see up here, I've got first, second, and third. Now, some terminology here. A very common terminology that is used in these types of analytical scenarios is the concept of a dimension. In terms of a pivot table, what you do is you drag columns of data to the rows and columns aspects of the pivot table, and that allows you to build out a pivot table. Every time you drag a column of data to either to the rows portion of a pivot table or to the columns portion of a pivot table, you're adding a dimension. 
So right now I have a one dimensional pivot table. I'm doing a one dimensional analysis, but I can add features quite easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the new survived to the columns. And now I've got a two dimensional pivot table here. I got new P class as my first dimension, and then I've got new survived as my second dimension. And not surprisingly, of course, we can do cool stuff with the pivot table, as you well know. We'll just drop new survived in the values, and we get some counts here. But percentages are actually a lot more interesting to use. So let's go ahead and convert these to row percentages here using our handy dandy Excel skills. Okay, and this is where we get our first insight. What we can see here is the survived, the survived column here, the survival rates, the percentages based on the data that we have by P class, new P class. And what we can see here is that not surprisingly, or maybe surprisingly, depending on how you look at it, survival rates tend to go down as you move from more expensive tickets, first class tickets, to less expensive tickets or third class tickets. And once again, we inferred in the first video that first, second, and third corresponded most likely to tickets on the Titanic because it was the only logical explanation for the data that we saw. So we're gonna operate under that assumption. So first and second and third. Now, it's very tempting as a data analyst, and I'll air quote that, because maybe you don't have the title, but you're operating as a data analyst. It's very tempting to start hypothesizing why you're seeing the things that you're seeing, to start forming ideas of why you're seeing the things that you're seeing. So for example, maybe you come up with the idea that, oh, the reason why I'm seeing this is because the lifeboats in the Titanic were at the top of the ship, First class passengers had cabins at the top of the ship and then second class and then finally third class at the bottom. And it's a proximity thing, right? Folks in third class were way far away from the lifeboat. So it was extremely unlikely that they were gonna make the journey up the ship all the way to a lifeboat. It's a reasonable idea. However, it's not particularly useful in this context because we have no data in our data set that tells us relative proximity of folks to a lifeboat. Because the ship is not only vertically large, the Titanic was not only vertically large, it was also horizontally large. So maybe it's not just how far down the, in the ship you were, but it was also how far back in the ship you were maybe. I don't know. The, the point is that we should only hypothesize with the data that we have, because otherwise we can get off on a tangent that isn't really useful in the end for driving a business outcome, because we can only work with the data that we have. Now, you could, for example, maybe go find that data uh, outside of this data set, but for the sake of this video series, we're only gonna work with the data that we have because that's usually the case most of the time. Okay, so we have the data. So what we can see here right now is that the pattern in the data tells us that third-class passengers perish, unfortunately, at a very high rate. Three out of four of the passengers in third class, based on this data set, perished. Now, <laughs> Given my, given my diatribe earlier about don't get fanciful with your hypotheses, let's just work with the data that we have. So a reasonable, another reasonable thing to check out is to be like, okay, hey, is there any, is there any pattern in the combination of new P class and sex? So there is a nautical rule of thumb in bad situations that goes women and children first. So one thing to explore potentially, because we have the data in the data set, is to see, is there any sort of gender pattern in the survival rates? So we can easily check that out by just grabbing sex and dragging it down to the rows. And you get exactly what you would expect, a three-dimensional representation of the data. So we have new P class, we have sex over here, and then we have new survived. And what this does is, pop some patterns in the data. So check this out. Females in first class overwhelmingly survive. Almost 97 out of 100 females in first class, at least based on the data, based on this percentage, survived. Similarly, in second class, 92% of females in the data set survived. And lastly, in third class, you've got a 50-50 split. What's really super interesting is then when you compare them to the males in the same class, because you can see here, survival rates for males are significantly lower in first class than they are for females, which 
given that we have the data, gives us some credence to this idea of, hey, maybe, just maybe, women and children first is an underlying pattern in the data. And we can also see here that males in second class, whoa, they only survived, unfortunately, at 15.74%. That is so low. And in third class, you can see it's even lower, 13.5%. So what we see all across all of the values of P class, first class, second class, and third class, is that females always survive at a much higher rate than males. It's not as pronounced in third class here as you can see. It's not as pronounced. However, it is non-trivial difference. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good insight into the data. And it also tells us some other things as well to help us guide what we're going to do later on in the series, which is we're probably not gonna focus a ton, at least in the beginning, on understanding which factors were significant in predicting female survival in first and second class because they already overwhelmingly survive. We're not gonna get a good return on our analytical investment here, at least in the early stages. We're gonna have a much better a much better return on investment if we can figure out, for example, why males survived or not in first class, second class, and third class, and then maybe as well why the female survival rate was only 50-50 in third class. That's where we're gonna focus a lot of the energy in the next videos. Now, we're not done. We can certainly add another, we can certainly add another dimension here. We've got three dimensions going on. Let's add a fourth dimension. Let's go ahead and add the embarked column. And what we can see here is a lot of goodness. Now, unfortunately, this also exhibits a problem with using multi-dimensional pivot tables. The human brain is optimized for visual pattern recognition. Humans are visual creatures. And tables of data are great and they work just fine and they're used all over the business world every day. However, when you start doing exploratory data analyses, you tend to find that you want to use multi-dimensional types of um, techniques and pivot tables break down really, really fast. So a lot of what we'll be doing in later videos in the series is eschewing the use of tables of data and moving towards data visualizations. And Excel offers a lot of data visualizations out of the box, either plain charts or pivot charts, and we will be using those extensively to try and visualize the data and use our human brains to see what patterns pop. This is all, this is all cool, and you can see that there's some, dif some differences here between the various ports of embarkation. So what embark tells you is where did the passenger get on the Titanic? It's one of three locations, Cherbourg, Queenstown, or Southampton. And you can see there are some differences between them and maybe that's worthy of exploration. Then you can see that through the various classes and by gender, you know, there's not necessarily huge differences until you get down to the males like down here in third class. And you can see that males in third class that got on in Q, embarked on Q, only survived at 7.69%, but those that embarked on C survived at 23.26%. That might be potentially interesting to explore later on in the series. Now, another thing that I should mention as well in terms of exploratory data analysis is that pivot tables only take you so far because one of the things that we will definitely want to do in our data visualizations later on in the series is combine the categorical data like we see here with the numeric data. And let me get rid of embarked here real quick and let me explain that a little bit further what I mean by that. Males, we have a working hypothesis using the data that we have of women and children first. And we can see that females survived overwhelmingly in first class. So that's like the women portion of that hypothesis. There might be a male aspect to that as well. So for example, of the 36.89% of males that survived in first class, how many of them were male children? Boys. Because if women and children first is a good pattern to use to understand what's going on in the data set, then you would expect that male children in first class survived because they were put on the lifeboats ahead of adult males. And maybe you might also see elderly males men that are old, maybe 50 plus years old or something like that, also 
survived at disproportionate rates because they were also given spots on the lifeboat in preference to adult males between the ages of like, I don't know, 20 and 50, let's say. To do those sorts of analyses, we need to be able to combine the age column of data, the age feature, with some of these other categoricals. And we will be working with visualizations in Excel that allow us to do those sorts of analyses. One last thing I should mention along these lines is that Excel has a lot of capabilities. However, some of the visualizations that it can do are limited. So for example, um, you can use tools like the R programming language to do dimensional analysis with five, six, seven, eight dimensions simultaneously. <laughs> okay, uh, so when, when you're doing an eight dimension data visualization in R programming, you need a really big monitor because you'll need the real estate to see it, but it is possible. Excel breaks down typically in those high level dimensions and R programming can also easily combine both numeric data and um, categorical data as well. So I teach a course, by the way, on R programming where I take Excel users and I teach them R programming in these data visualization techniques that I'm, that I'm talking about here. And of course, you can use other tools as well. I tend to use R programming for this, but tools like Tableau and Power BI are also useful to take over on this multi-dimensional, high-dimensional data visualization analysis when Excel just can't do it. Okay, pivot tables. Excellent, excellent way to do an initial pass of categorical exploratory data analysis. Next up in the series, we're gonna be investigating numeric data using histograms. When video three is up, I will put it either here or here. And if you're interested in learning more, you can go ahead and check out the card up here. I've added a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. And remember that you can get the workbooks from the GitHub and the link to the GitHub is down below in the description under this video. Okay, that's it. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.